Hi there. Okay. Sketchbook ideas. Getting out of an art block. All things that I think we're all struggling with. Well, maybe not this moment, but we have. Also, I have had a sore throat this weekend. I don't really know why. I tried to record it yesterday, and then when listening to this back, like, I sounded rough. You think this is bad? It was worse. So, I'm sorry about the voice, but we are, in fact, gonna have to deal with it. I actually wrote it down in this, my tips. Could I have found a bigger notebook? Could I have found a post-it that's bigger? Mm-hmm, I could have, but I didn't because this is cuter. Okay, anyway, here is my sketchbook. Here are my notes, and let's get into it. Tip number one. Okay, this is a little bit vague, but I will explain. Don't limit your style by your materials, if that makes sense. Because like, at least with me, with art block, a lot of the time it's not that I don't want to be doing art. It's that like, I have no ideas. Um, like, let me try to find examples. Um, this is fine. This one, colored pencil like, the whole time. Um, but then for a lot of my sketchbook, I use more like a gel pen. You can see that here. Um, or like I got into graphite or here's acrylic or like even different forms of art. Like don't, you know, we're extending past our sketchbook. Um, art knows no bounds. So like jewelry making, um, ceramics, like this is kind of more of an art block tip rather than like filling your sketchbook tip, but like any materials you have, like use them. You know when you're maybe nine and you use these like scratchy, like you scratch it off and there's colors? That's in my sketchbook now. Like, I think it might just like, it gives you a new way to express yourself, if that doesn't sound too corny. Like sometimes even it's like finding a new pencil, like it's just a pencil, but like it's a new pencil, you know? Like this is a pencil I found on the ground at school and it's purple. I'm like, wow, this is a great pencil and it's just a pencil, but like, I want to use it. So I'll make something. <clears throat> I'm really trying to like make my voice more presentable, but I, um, anyway, let's move on. Tip number two. This is my favorite tip. Taping glue are your best friends. Like you have a best friend. I'm sorry, we're going to have to ditch them because tape and glue are your best friends. Um, the amount of tape, or like, it's not even tape. Like I've gotten to points where like, these are like the little sticky parts, like on stamps. Like we, I just ripped it. Cause I was like, I need tape. And this applies the way I think about it in three categories. Category one, or I'm already in a number list. Category A. My sketchbook's just regular paper. I taped in some watercolor paper with like some fun things so I can use watercolor. Category B, I don't know if I like this letter thing. I've drawn something else or I have something else and I just want to tape it in because I like it. Because then like with me, it, it kind of like inspires me more. If I have something that I like and I like, like even if it's written in a school thing, if it's in my sketchbook, I find that I can like go back and look through it and kind of see what I was thinking or like maybe try to flesh out that idea more even. Like this, this is literally a poem. This is from my English class. I'm a really good student. But like, you know, it's just really, you can tape anything and you can glue anything in. Um, and then category three, which I think this one's the most useful for building your sketchbook. Like if you want your spreads to be more full or you have to like find more inspiration for your spreads, um, tape things in and then work around them. Like there's a leaf. It's a leaf. Here's, um, oh my God, did you hear that? Um, sorry. Here's a receipt. There's more. Like I find that if I have something to build around, it's easier. Because it's not that like there's a big white blank page 
and it's up to me to make it look pretty. It's that like there's a page and there's some shapes and maybe like around that shape it looks like a cat. So around that cat I can do something, you know what I mean? Like it's less intimidating I think might be it. So that's tip two. I love this tip. And also it's because it might be like personal opinion, you might hate this, but I really like when you can like tell where my sketchbook is. You can, in my last video I said when my sketchbook has girth. I think it made us all uncomfortable. What else, what other word do you want me to say? Like it has thickness, I don't know. I, you know, I like when there's a lot of stuff in it and it's because I tape so much in. Like even if I flip through it, you can tell. Like half the pages in here just are really not the actual pages. Or even I'll be putting things in um, between things like oil pastel so they don't smudge into each other, which is just a pro tip. Um, if you're using any material that smudges, like charcoal maybe, I know that there are fixatives and things that you can use, but if you're like me and you're lazy, um, just get a different piece of paper. Like this is between two oil pastel pages or over here, I just drew something in color pencil. And then on this side, it's oil pastel. This is a page of a book. Um, and it also kind of gives you an opportunity to draw on a book page later if you're bored, you know? Tip number three. This kind of goes with the tip I just said, but it's that, again, my issue is usually like, I don't know where to start. It's just too intimidating to have a whole white blank abyss staring at me. So I like to paint like color blobs. You can see this is my watercolor. Color blobs here. Um, I find using highlighter worked really well for me. Let me see where else I have color blobs. Color blobs here, kind of. Give yourself a smaller space. Like you can kind of see here. I just drew a box in orange. Oh. I drew a box in orange, so I don't have to deal with the whole page. Like I'm not tasking myself with making an oil pastel landscape across this whole, how big is this notebook? Um, Across a whole notebook, face, face size notebook. You know, like, I, and then it also kind of makes your sketchbook more like diverse and interesting, I think, because every page is like these like, little shapes and I find that I like these pages the best. Everything's falling apart. Usually I have like a binder clip that holds it all together, but I'm like flipping, that's fine. I think it, a lot of getting out of art blocks for me is just like giving myself less pressure. And that's where color blobs come in. That's where taping things in and just physically like limiting how much you need to deal with. Number four, the way that I couldn't read that for a second, that's pathetic. It's not even bad handwriting, I just like am dumb. Okay, anyway, tip number four is ideas don't have to start off being visual. Now let me explain, because that makes zero sense as I said it. Um, I know a lot of people who like ideas come to them as visuals all the time, like a lot of artists like they think they want to draw a landscape of the Appalachian Mountains. And you're like, wow, good job. Like you're really doing something, you know? And that happens to me, but I think like almost 50% of the time, my ideas come more like as maybe stories or like little like anecdotes, maybe that's the right word. I have a good example. With this page here, they're like, I even wrote it out. I was just thinking, I don't know where this came from, but I was thinking and I was like, wouldn't it be so, oh, I know, I know where this came from, ha. Um, I don't know how many of us have watched like this YouTube video about the green lady of Brooklyn. That's actually all the context I'm gonna give. If you haven't seen it, you're gonna have to search that up yourself. Um, it's a good experience. But like, I was thinking, 
what if there's like a green lady brooklyn what if there's just a guy in new york that just always wears colorful scarves and that's how everyone knows him and then this kind of took on a life of its own as most of my thoughts do head is very busy up there and i was like his name is mr o in my head his name is oscar and he feeds the pigeons and all the kids around the neighborhood they know him because he's so nice so then I was like, I want to, let me, let me see what that could be. And then I wrote out the story and then I drew these guys. I mean, they're all one guy, they're Mr. O. You see what I'm saying though? Like your idea doesn't have to start off. Like I didn't think of this man originally and then write the story around him. It kind of worked backwards. This is kind of a less intense scale of that. But here I was just, I was drawing while painting my nails. And I was like, this looks so stupid probably. Like to other people watching me paint my nails and like draw like this. I probably look so dumb. So then that's what I drew. Like it didn't start off as an idea for a drawing as much as it started off as something that either happened to me or something that I was like thinking of. And then like somewhere along the way, it becomes art. So I guess the main point is like, don't like confine yourself to purely visual ideas like if you're a person that likes writing and you have like a fun little book idea like draw what you think the book makes you feel like or you know or like if you're a songwriter dude if you're a songwriter let me know you're really cool anyway <laughs> um like write what your songs make you feel like or something in your song even i can feel my voice getting kind of worse and worse as this video goes on i was also told to rest my voice not gonna listen Oh, we're on the last tip, guys. Tip number five. The way I phrase this is so stupid and corny. Be okay with crappy art or try smiley face. I'm not lying. That's what I wrote. All right. Um, that one's more of the pressure thing too. These are all kind of interconnected if you can tell, but like half the time my art looks terrible or I think it's gonna look terrible. Like that's what stops me from making more. Cause I'm like, oh my God, this is really, you cannot do this, queen. This is not gonna work. And you know it, you know what I mean? Where you're like, I've never used colored pencils and done realism. As a result, science has told me it will not go well. So you're like, well, guess I'll stop. But no, 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 you have to do it anyway. This is like a motivational speech. That's what happened here. I just described my exact experience. This is supposed to be me. Can you tell it does not look good? Mm-hmm, yeah. I don't do realism. If you flip the rest of my sketchbook, there is barely a hint of it. So I put off drawing realism forever, but then I was like, you know what? You can always collage over your pages. So just like, again, as stupid as it sounds, like be okay with it looking kind of mildly crappy or beyond mildly crappy, be okay with looking like total shit. Because at the end of the day, you both got more experience, which means the next time you try it, you'll be better. And you're like, you'll kind of know a little bit more, even if it's just a muscle memory thing. And also, hopefully you'll have some fun. And also, also, there's always collaging over your pages. I would suggest not ripping them out just because, again, I have this thing where I really like to be like really intensely thick but like you could also always rip it out i don't know it has helped me to not rip out anything like this sketchbook's the first sketchbook where i haven't like i've been consciously saying like no you're not ripping it out you're gonna deal with your issues this face a war crime but it's there we've grown to be friends you know i think you kind of like it's almost comforting to see like wow I've gotten better at least, you know? I mean, it's not good, but like compared to this one, that's amazing. So like, I don't know. I think there's just something to be said about like being kind to yourself when you make art because it doesn't have to be good if you're having fun. And also someone thinks it's good. Like a toddler would look at that and he would be like, you did such a good job. That was so, that was so slight of you. Well, maybe, mm, 
I will maybe say that. I will maybe say that a toddler would say that's so slay. But like, that would be the sentiment is what I'm trying to explain here. I don't know. This could be just like the ramblings of an idiot, but. those are all my tips it's kind of sad like every time I finish filming a YouTube video I kind of get upset like mildly sad I have to say bye and it's like Jesus who no one else cares but like I care I don't know if that's gonna comfort you or make it seem like I'm very lonely anyway with snow cats and very full sketchbooks I love you. Goodbye. Thank you for watching.